So here's where we left off. We now have both pieces cut, front and back. And off camera, I cut down the size of the pipe by about three inches just for better scale. So the idea here is, is like that. So this is the idea behind the piggy bank. You know, you got the, the deals on both sides. So with it assembled, we got this thing going on. Now, two things left to do. One is to put the rods in that go through those four holes and to the other side. And the rods are laying right here on the bench. And I've got some, some little uh, acorn nuts that we can use. Next thing I'm going to do is put the slot in. So let's go in the uh, machine shop and get this clamped onto the mill table and throw a quick slot in. I've got the mill vise pushed out of the way. It needed to be trammed anyways. And I've gotten out this big V block which has been laying around here for ages. And now I know why. It was waiting for me to come and put this in. So we're going to put it in here like this, probably down a little ways so I have to move the mill vise completely off the table. And we'll put some finger clamps in here. And I think that's all we're going to need. I, we could put a finger clamp under here, but that's an awful short reach. And I don't think it's necessary. For what we're doing, just hold downs here is going to be adequate. After we finished the slot, I took it outside, cleaned it up, and then uh, gave it a little bit of a polish with a 3M scotch brat pad on a die grinder. And washed it one more time, and then I put a coat of wax on it, just regular old furniture wax, so that uh, it wouldn't leave fingerprints. So at this stage of the game, the last piece of this puzzle is to cut and thread four rods that are going to go in here like this. So, I guess the thing to do here is cut them a little long. Well, duh. Oh shit. I've got enough rod here to cut them oversized and still have plenty, but because Because these nuts have a limited depth, I'm going to have to be pretty close. I think what we're going to do is we're going to start, I can over thread them because I can thread them in farther in on the ends. Um, they just can't be over length. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do one first to make sure it plays nice. And then from that we'll do the others. So a little bit of an eyeball here. I think we're going to need something about like that. I'm going to go cut this one and I'll be right back. on this one looked like it was the first time I ever ran a die down something. 
That's kind of because it was. So we're going to start that one on there and just call that where it lives. Ah, oh, sweet. Sticks through just enough. I think that's it. I'll go cut three more and I'll be right back. So I was saying, this piece of aluminum tubing was bought for me by my father back when I lived in California. He's long since passed away. And he bought it after I'd mentioned wanting to make a, a bank out of a tube. And it appeared one day when I came home from school. It was there and I asked, what's the aluminum for, Dad? And he said, you said you wanted to make a piggy bank out of a tube. I guess for all these years, this was the design I had in mind. I, I didn't have a dollar symbol in the end of it, but I, it was round and had the insets, had feet. That is a very difficult thing to do by hand. And so it wasn't until last year when I finished the CNC machine that I realized, hey, I can finally build the piggy bank the way I'd imagine when Dad got me the aluminum. And there it is. All finished up. 20 some odd years later. And I don't have a penny in my pocket to put in it. <laughs> Appreciate you uh, hanging out and watching it go together. See you next time you stop by the shop. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>